Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Main Character Syndrome. I'm your host, Cheesy Manfredo, aka Alfredo Morales. And before we start this episode, I'd like to say thank you to our previous guests of Cash and Kazoo. Make sure you go check out the previous episode because it was pretty great with them. Accompanying with me in this new episode, we got uh, Danny and reoccurring fan favorite character, Sporktown Heroine. Go ahead, you guys never. can introduce yourselves. I've never been on this podcast before. Nobody knows you've, who I am. You've been on all my podcasts before. Every time I make a podcast, you just want to be on it. No. Every time that I make true. a podcast, Cheesy's like, I'm not. I'm going to ban Spork from my new podcast. She's not going to be on my podcast. That's what you say every single time you make a new that's, one. That's and, a lie. She's and look where I am. Lies. Look where I am she's, right now. No, that's 100% lies. fact. She's been on the cheesy cast. She's been on the. Nah, yeah, I don't cast. know why you say that because it's always it's always not true whenever you say it. You, I I don't ban you from my podcast. No, you just ever. make a when, you just make a big like like a uh, performative thing of doing it, but it's not actually true. Danny, you could introduce yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Danny. I go by Gloomy Punks on like Twitter and pretty much everything else. Uh, I make a comic. Oh, it's pretty a good. good comic. Thank called, you. Yeah, Thank you. She actually makes a good comic. <laughs> yeah. Unlike somebody. Unlike some people I know. I'm not going to say any names, though, because we wouldn't want to hurt their feelings. You know, Spark, I wouldn't want to hurt their feelings, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. That's why I'm yeah, not going to exactly. say it either. Yeah, so I, yeah exactly. We're not going to say it. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. No, we would not want to do that. <laughs> and, and anyway, this is uh, Main Character Syndrome. And I want to ask you guys, what uh, what do you what's your take on main character syndrome? What do you think a main character syndrome individual individual is like? Oh man, <laughs> probably somebody who like <laughs> argues a lot on Twitter about like the stupidest stuff that doesn't matter mm-hmm. in a really self righteous way. Yeah, probably somebody who would like make like dumb little comics trying to get people riled up on twitter yeah who would do trying that? to get a lot of attention just for who? for no real reason just wants to get attention just to have people talking right. about them you know speaking about attention um last episode um i haven't edited it yet by the time we're recording this but by the time this episode drops the previous episode will already be up and i'm thinking that i'm gonna name that episode um i regret big twitter artists <laughs> We don't we don't, we we don't even talk about it really in the last we talked about it for ten seconds in the last episode, but I think it's a it's a pretty funny title that people start clicking on it. It'd be funny uh-huh. if people just start using that against me. Yeah, I um Yeah. So um tell tell us uh tell us a little little something about yourself, Danny. Um tell us about making comics and pissing people off. <laughs> Um, well, I was actually really scared to make my comic at first because I thought I was going to piss people off by making, like, a comic about incels. I thought it was going to be people who were like, how dare you make this comic? And I don't, I don't know why you're sympathizing with these people. And, or, like, on the other side, people being like, how dare you portray us in such a way? I can't believe you won't sympathize with us. We have such a hard life. And true. so either way, very I was going to, very true. It's very, uh, it's very much like oppression when you don't have pussy, honestly. True. True. Literally. Yes. Oh my God. That's what I've been saying. Very Finally. True. Oh, very true. Fuck. true. It's kind of like, I'm going to say this. It's kind of like abuse really. If like <laughs> it, it is right. It's kind of like psychological abuse, abuse. I think like denying someone pussy is way worse than like right. being gaslit in right. my opinion, you know, how right. to take um i just want to tell you i'm a big fan of um stories about incels i, I think feel like pretty funny i feel like the main character in um cat girl gloomy's web comic is i feel like he's not quite an incel or at least that part of him isn't really shown because he could be worse the thing about incels is like they're like fucking awful and mean and terrible this guy just seems like a sad sack of shit you know he's just like depressed yeah. generally he's not like to insults here yet uh he's he's not there yet but some things get revealed later about like his uh history what? online oh that's exciting epic. very exciting that is pretty good so you should check that out cat girl 
on webtoons i just want to say i'm a big fan of like uh stories about like white boys being awful it's like you know like the joker <laughs> yeah she's like, like the joker that. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I love it, like, when, like, white boys are just garbage people. <laughs> like, true. very kind of, yeah, anything that's kind of like that um taxi driver-like angle. You ever seen a taxi driver, Danny? I have, yeah. Yeah, that's great. He's basically, you'll never, like, you'll never yeah. ever get cheesy to shut up about taxi driver. He's basically, like, an incel in a Chad's body, right? What, a taxi driver? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know if I want to call him, like, a... I feel like over the course <laughs> over the course of time, I, back back in the day, like an incel could get dates, but now like an incel just can't right. get dates. There were no know? incels back in the day. Like that was not a thing. No, there was incels. <laughs> they, they were, were just, just maidenless. No, there was incels, but no one. There was no internet for them to just project on and like. The internet is what together. is what makes a person an incel. Like that's it, not true. Before the internet, Hard people were people were just like not pussy havers. You know, like. <laughs> no, no, no bitch getters, you know. Like no that, that's just getters. what an incel was. But now an incel is like they have all these beliefs and they have like this way of thinking that's like been congealed uh, due to the internet. So, so you're saying that you need like a, a a sort of belief system to fully be an incel? I think you so need, too, because like need a incels, Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, incels all believe the same things. Like if you're just like somebody who's sad that they don't get pussy, then like you're like you're not an incel. You're just you know. You're just normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's normal just to be mad. sad about not getting pussy. But is if that... you if you're like mm. women like like I need like women owe me this or like they have all this like whole belief system that they believe in that's all twisted mm. and warped now. So so you you're saying that like the belief that they're owed something that's like that's what makes one an incel. That's number one. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. that's like two? that's like step number one step, step number two number is probably one. like probably like falling into the ideas of like why they're in they're an incel you know like looks maxing you know like mm-hmm. they're genetically not like just just genetically inferior to like chads and all this True. stuff you know yeah yeah and then like there's also some political stuff about it too like incels mm-hmm. tend to be more conservative Oh, for sure. It, it, I mean, a lot of conservatives like to push this kind of angle that, like, you see, because the nuclear family doesn't exist, that's why you get no pussy, you see. All right. Because um, mm-hmm. women are given too much freedom, and now they could be picky, right, <laughs> about the guys All they right, date. True. They couldn't do that back then, which is which is really true. It, it, it is true, and it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fucking great, yeah, that now, now, now women have the choice. Good job. Good job, women. Yeah. I just I just want to remind the audience this is a pro women podcast, right? So if you I hate pro- women, yeah, I don't I don't hate women. I just think they're being unfair. I I just <laughs> that was a deep Pico <laughs> quote. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I um I remember when um there was that one uh Canadian incel who like ran over people with oh, a, with geez. a man, and um and people asked jordan peterson like what was his opinion like how how would jordan P- peterson solve the incel question right and um he said that there should be mandatory like, marriage clean your rooms. <laughs> you know we should be clean state, your rooms. state funded marriage that's kind of where i got the idea for cat girls because i Yo. found like an Yo. internet meme of like we should have state mandated genetically engineered cat girl waifus yeah and mm. i was like Okay, but that's horrifying. Let me just make a comic about that. Literally, it's like it's literally like state mandated pussy if you're so if you're too depressed. Get it? I, yeah. 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 Get you it? Know, <laughs> 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 I, I had it. Well, women could be clever. That's so crazy. Uh, I I didn't know that. But um, <laughs> actually, Danny, I'm so glad that you're the one making this comic because like. Like the the evil direction, like I think the very <laughs> evil direction your comic could have taken it if you weren't the one doing it would have been like the typical like I'm just a bland everyday um Japanese boy and this <laughs> this cat girl shows up to my house and now she's my girlfriend and she loves me and then all the fucking weeaboos would be like whoa ten out of ten oh this is so great oh Superior Japan does it again that's, that's like the I evil always... version of cat girl yeah that's. I've always been interested in that genre of fiction just because I could see like the horrifying things about it. 
-hmm. and it seemed like none of like i was thinking specifically about uh chobits like Mm. where there's like this sort of like digital cat girl ghost who like comes out of his computer and then like they're in love and he's just a normal average black haired guy and that's (laughs) and that's it and Um, i I, yeah yeah. oh sorry i was just kind of like but this is weird right Mm -hmm. like this is it it is weird it's like because like it's kind of like women losing their autonomy almost right like i'm I'm gonna say it i'm gonna say that's what we want that's the the goal japanese have perfected the art of objectifying women and it's uh it's beautiful i think in my opinion but (laughs) i will not participate Um, in cheesy's racism (laughs) <laughs> wow okay herm what i'm saying is that like there's yeah like it's if you if women in this case are kind of more like objects these stories come off as lol these this is okay actually yeah right but if you're not like a guy and then you like think about it you're like actually no this is kind of terrible actually i mean it's this usually usually things like this make the woman some kind of like animalistic or like non-human entity like half animal or half like robot or like Mm -hmm. a program or like some sort of thing that like is not fully a human Mm -hmm. and you could like argue if it has full human rights and autonomy just Mm -hmm. it's like she's like your pet if she's like a cat girl she's like your pet you know and you can do whatever you want there. That, no. that's boring like your I just want to bang her. <laughs> I kind of I wanted to get into that like argument of like does she even have like full sentience about like what's even going on and stuff as like um I I thought it would be like a really interesting argument about like okay she's obviously like a sentient being. She's not like completely helpless but she can't like fully take care of herself. She can't so, and then she's do anything. Yeah, she can't legally do anything, and then she's just given to this guy who's, like, super depressed and can't do anything for himself either, so they're just both in this, like, shitty situation where, like, neither of them can help each other, and they just form, like, a really weird codependent relationship. See, when when I'm reading the comic, I I suppose this is, like, what might maybe take it too dark too quickly, but I'm like, okay... From what I would know about a guy like this, he would, like, try to smash instantly. But it seems that has not happened in this comic. And I'm wondering, like, that's, I mean, that would be like a dark, like a really dark thing. But like, I feel like, I feel like the comic's going to get darker. Although I don't want to, I don't want to know too much because I want to be kind of surprised where the direction of the comic is going. Yeah, I will say that there's like something similar to that. uh, Because like on Webtoons, you can't like do any sexual content. So oh, it all right, has to yeah. be really implied. Um, mm-hmm. that's but right. there is I something about that. I have I had like a comic that I did in college where I used like brushing teeth as a metaphor. So mm-hmm. I was thinking about like resurfacing that again. <laughs> <laughs> and and bringing that into cat. The old the old it. Monica type. Bring, bring yeah. bring the brushing teeth metaphor into cat girl. But like a... really dark too. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be pretty good, actually. Thanks. I would dig that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you. Oh, fuck, I had something else I wanted to say about your comic, but um, it's not ringing a bell right now. But I'll probably remember later. I do kind of want to talk about something very particular that happened that's been happening to me recently, and uh. It, it's a, it's an event. It's a very crucial event in my life, and Spork was there for that event too, <laughs> right? Oh. And uh, this this could be the start of the neck of this next segment, which is the, of my main character of the day, right? Ooh. And and my main character of the day is a uh, Coco the gorilla. Do you remember Coco the gorilla? <laughs> yes. Okay. So I think I know where for, this is going. Yeah, yeah. So Coco the gorilla um, was a gorilla who. Everyone thought knew sign language and could totally communicate with humans. Um, but if you actually look into the facts, it's not true. At she all. couldn't do yeah, it's not true <laughs> at all, right? And like not um, even close. And I wasn't even like a big Coco stan. It was just I just kind of accepted this my whole life, right? Right. And t- mm-hmm. until Spork told me um that 
she couldn't know sign language. And then I'm like, what? And then I looked it up like right there in the call and it was true. Right. And I, I was, bro- I was broken. I was broken that day. That was just kind of like, yeah. So what happened was, I don't know what we were talking about, but Coco, the gorilla came up and cheesy was just like, you know, acting like he thought that she actually knew sign language. And I'm like, well, you know, she didn't actually know sign language. And Cheesy just was in disbelief. He did not believe it at all. He was, like, super against this idea. I explained (laughs) to him, like, if a gorilla was able to be taught sign language, somebody would have been able to reproduce it by now. Nobody Mm -hmm. has reproduced it (laughs) at all. Yeah, that's, Um, like, the second... That's, like, the second big clue about it. Yeah, like, it was, like, scientific... This lady, I don't know what her name was, who... I think it was, like, Penny Patterson or something. Yeah, who taught her was, like was like a scientist and she published papers about it nobody has been able to reproduce it and it's like oh she didn't publish papers it's more like she did a blog post about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, like yeah an that's like anti-vaxxer mom almost yeah, exactly yeah it's like oh you know in a science it, these stuff was never published in a scientific journal right there was like articles on national geographic but what what people don't realize about national geographic that's not it's not some not sort of like site it's not some sort of scientific institute. It's more of like a, it's kind of just like reality. Whoa, look TV. at this! It's, it's like reality TV for science or something. It's not actual a science into institute. You know, it's like the nature version of the Daily Mail. Mm-hmm, exactly. It's yeah. like if you love animals and you're like kind of a nerd when you're a little kid, um, you probably read National Geographic as an and adult. You want to see like a, a booby from someone in a. And an African tribe I, or something. I, and then... I think I think what's most sus about the Coco story is that like the only source that Coco could talk was just one person. Right. Was just ever one person. That was Francine Patterson, right? Only one person was able to ever communicate with her. Mm-hmm. Like people know sign language, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's not like I think it was a specific type of sign language. She they made like, like a custom sign language. Yeah, they made like a custom sign language for gorillas that was complete bullshit because it was just not consistent. You yeah, know? yeah. So I I found out about this and it, it really rocked my world. Cheesy was and distraught. He was like I, destroyed. I was just surprised how distraught I was from it. <laughs> like I don't know because you were in the like back arguing. Of my head, like you were like you were like mad at me for real. <laughs> I, I I was yeah I was like having like my mental break. That was like my Joker moment. <laughs> It was. It's kind of sad too, because it like, um, it's yeah. it's animal abuse. Yes, yes, that's so right. It's fucking animal abuse. It's just fucking garbage. But it's it's sold as this kind of like inspiring story, you know, and which is even more fucking evil. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. So anyway, that broke my mind. Um, there's also a really good YouTube video, um, created by. Let me look up. I, I don't know if you've seen this YouTube video already, but this guy goes through like the complete history of Coco. Oh yeah, by Soup Emporium. It's called "Why Coco Probably Couldn't Talk." Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he like really breaks it down. I think the one part that's kind of like I think says a, it's, this says a lot about society is that um there was a part where he talked about how like because of Coco's popularity, more people were trying to learn like sign language. Right, so they can understand like their like deaf friends or whatnot. That's good. And, yeah. Yeah, but what's kind of fucked up is like, well, why didn't your deaf friend inspire you to learn sign language? <laughs> why did it have to be a gorilla? Like, actually, I have a lot to say about this because that's my job is dealing with deaf people directly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... and like my dad is deaf too. Oh, really? Completely. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Word. Like fully deaf. No, he's hard of hearing, but it's getting worse. He has, like, really oh, advanced no. hearing aids. Um, but, like, he started recently learning sign language mm-hmm. to kind of help communicate. Because, mm-hmm. like, your like, your hearing can deteriorate, and he already, like, even as a young child, had to be, like, fitted with hearing aids and stuff. Yeah, that's one of the main things I'm worried about, is my hearing deteriorating. Um, yeah, I work at this job where I deal with like deaf people it's like a job specifically for them and it's like um a lot of the people's families don't learn sign language they don't know um I'm not gonna say what specifically my job is but um 
American Sign Language is sort of like a kind of alternate language to English. It's similar, but it has a lot of things that are sort of different and weird about it. And the amount of people who have who will talk to a person who's deaf every day, but like barely put in the effort to learn this language, which is not that difficult to learn, is like it's like crazy. Like you can barely communicate. And a lot of and a lot of people just like feel like their deaf relative is like a burden on them, like calling them all the time with like without being able to speak properly, quote unquote. It's like Yeah, fucked. people are it's kind really of weird. Fucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people yeah. are pretty fucking weird and it and it took like a celebrity chimp. <laughs> like at least people be like because i guess i guess more people are interested in talking to a gorilla than like their actual relatives i mean right so i would sad. be too that's fair I, yeah. I mean if i could talk to an animal over like my actual relatives i would definitely choose an animal yeah i guess right. it would be pretty fun to talk to my cat i'm gonna i'm gonna hot take about talking with animals i 100 percent bet talking to animals is super uninteresting well yeah i mean if we could <laughs> talk to animals well it's sort of okay (laughs) it's sort of like a it's sort of an interesting idea because it's like a lot of animals have different thought process to us and like Mm -hmm. communication for them would be different Mm -hmm. so it would be different from speaking to a person that's thinking but also some animals probably think close enough to us that they would just feel like you'd basically be talking to like a baby or something like that I, I always felt like um, dogs would be totally okay. If dogs could talk, they would be totally <laughs> okay with like, us with us eating them. I think dogs would be so down for that, actually. I mean, because, yeah. Because like, <laughs> their logic would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm like meat and you eat meat. So it's okay to eat me when I die, right? Like that makes sense to me. All right. A dog doesn't have any concept of burying their dead or anything mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, I feel like a cat would be okay with eating you while you're alive, though. Like, <laughs> dogs also have like this pack uh, mentality where like they'll attack o- o- older dogs. Um, oh, really? The, if they're like sick or something, like this happened in in my family. We had three dogs. One was like a mastiff that uh, I got when my granddad passed away. Um, the other one was an older uh, like mixed breed that I don't really know what he was. A mixed breed of and then mm-hmm. the other one the youngest one was a uh, aussie shepherd and like when both of them started to go downhill as they were getting older um he started being like really aggressive towards them and like aggressive towards like like he had a lot of food aggression um mm-hmm. so when they were eating we'd have to separate them and i the younger I one would out, have aggression towards the older one yeah Damn. And I found out mm-hmm. that like dogs, like wild dogs in packs, will just attack their older dogs uh, in the pack uh, because they're kind of like bringing down the pack by being old and decrepit and not being able to do much. Damn, mm-hmm. that's kind of like fascism. Yeah. Are dogs fascists? So, dogs are natural. See, this is why I don't want to talk to fascists. You know? <laughs> dogs are dogs fascists. Are fascist. I didn't know that. It did. Oh my god, German Shepherd. Oh my god, it makes sense. It makes so much sense. <laughs> you think about it. <laughs> Cats I mean, are the opposite. Sense, though. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, Cats will I, heal I, each other with their purrs. So if another cat is older, they'll like be uh, constantly by them, like purring, to try and I, heal them. I feel Aww. like that's like. I mean, cats and dogs have pretty different pack behavior. Like. Cats do have packs, but it's like dogs are pack hunters and cats mm-hmm. aren't really. Yeah, so it's like kind solo. of it's kind mm-hmm. of like for a dog if you're old and you're weak, you you really are just bringing the pack down. You're not going to be able to mm-hmm. you know, help out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's like weird that they have these same like patterns of behavior in domesticated settings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's instinct. I think mm-hmm. um... in your code. It, it make it makes sense. Uh, dogs are a bunch of kiss asses. Uh, of course they're fascists. <laughs> Duh. Duh. It makes total sense now. I mean, what animal are police working with? Oh shit! I mean, yeah, I mean, you, know, you don't saying. see cats. You don't see cats working with. Never with cops. seen a cat yeah. in there. Never. The cats are anti-fascists. 
base. I'm glad I, I'm glad I have the superior pet. I just want to say I like I, pref I prefer dogs. I just want to put that out here. <laughs> okay. I'm just all joking. Right, dogs right. are based and cool. Okay. And I, love right, them. Right, okay. I love them very right. much. Okay. I like I like it when my friends have dogs. I wouldn't really want to get another dog. Um my problem with dogs is just they're so loud. Like mm -hmm. my neighbors um just leave their dogs outside. Don't leave your dog outside so that every morning at 8 a.m. it wakes up and then just starts barking to the other dogs in the neighborhood. Please don't do that because it will disturb my sleep and I will be very angry. Yeah, shut the fuck and I, up. And I will bitch. want to do bodily harm to you or possibly steal your dog and, and put it somewhere else. So don't do, do that. The, are you going to do the classic technique of putting bleach on a slice of cheese and throwing it over the fence. No, I'm not going to poison anyone's dog, but I do fantasize <laughs> about stealing their dog and delivering it to somebody far away and from raising me. raising it as my own. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a better idea. No, I just want the dog to be away from me. You gotta, you gotta make sure their backyard doesn't have cameras. I mean... I'm... Go ahead. I, I know this dog who doesn't know how to bark. Oh, <laughs> baby. <laughs> They should have. They should breed that dog to make yeah. a genetic line of They should. Dog. They, you know, the, yeah. you think they would have done that by now? It's maybe weird because maybe like, they he have. moves his mouth like he barks. Like he moves Aww. his mouth like he's barking, but he not no sound comes out. Baby. I love the. Um, I love the fucking picture where it's showing all the different types of breed of dogs, and the caption is like "All tomorrows." <laughs> yeah, literally. That's really, yeah, that's literally what that shit is. But um, anyway, I want to go to my second half of my coco story i just want to say cats can be really loud too but go ahead okay i love them love these little guys but anyway um so the first half is me getting jokerfied right that's part one part two <laughs> is me jokerfying the world and by that and by that i mean that oh, okay so on tiktok i recently made a, a tiktok where um i used the audio from smiling friends uh the dj spits audio where he's all like Man, I don't know what to think no more, man. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. I use that audio, and it's me running around my room, and the caption is like, me when I found out that Coco the Gorilla didn't know sign language, right? And um, ever since I posted that, I've been getting like a bombardment of comments of people mm -hmm. saying I'm wrong, that Coco the Gorilla did know sign language, that I'm wrong, and I should do some research, actually. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, people really want to believe Coco the Gorilla could talk. <laughs> They yeah, just, I mean, of course you want to believe it. It's like it's like a mm -hmm. the internet. I mean, not the internet. The world is worse by not mm -hmm. by like Coco the gorilla not knowing sign language. You know, like mm -hmm. oh, it's like oh, every every attempt we've had to actually communicate with animals has failed. Have I mean, you seen the video it. about the? I think it was like an atrocity guide video about the dolphin lady. Oh, I haven't finished oh, that. But that video, like that video, is so freaky. Like I need to really finish it. That's a good but one. Yeah, go on. What were you going to say about that video? I mean, it's like a woman went to such extents, like such lengths to communicate with a dolphin, even to the extent of like jerking it off when it gets horny, <laughs> which happened often. And it's just like, oh, my God, this is like a disaster. <laughs> like it's it didn't work like all this work for it, nothing. Like it, she really tried. But like, I, I can't believe jerking off the dolphin didn't make it talk. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, was only that easy. The thing with dolphins is like we know they have a very complex and and actually real language. Same with whales. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just the brain is just so different that it's almost impossible to decipher it. Like, mm -hmm. if you have an ancient language from humans that you have mm -hmm. no connection to modern day with, it's still incredibly difficult to decipher. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it's like yeah. For another animal, it's like there's no point of reference for anything. Yeah, because you don't I... know how it develops. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah, you you're right. It's just like just not built the same. It's built different. Yeah. Ironically, right. I think I'm gonna name this episode. It's gonna be like a picture of Coco the gorilla on the thumbnail, and the episode is gonna be called Coco Not Real. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <it doesn't exist. laughs> there was no actual gorilla. It was just a dude there was no suit. gorilla. It was a dude in a suit. Did you guys know this whole story about Coco's like weird obsession with like seeing nipples? No, what? I don't Wait, think you, so. you didn't you didn't you didn't know about this? No, I like think when, I when know she, about that. Okay, so there was okay, so Robin Williams apparently was was quote unquote close friends with Coco the Gorilla, <laughs> right? Right. And uh, when he first when he first met Coco the Gorilla, she did kind of like a a, a sign, 
and then uh Patterson told Robin Williams, "Oh, she wants to see your nipples." Cuz she's like <laughs> like seeing she likes seeing nipples, right? That's like her thing, right? And and Robin Williams like pulled up his shirt to show like his his nipples to her and then Coco fucking grabbed his nipples. <laughs> And I as, I assume he like I assume he let go, but I think Robin Williams on in his stand up routine admitted that he was kind of getting a little hard when Coco grabbed his nipples. I mean, who wouldn't, right? And um, and there there was actually like I think a lawsuit of one of the former employees at the like Coco facility who who won because um apparently like Coco tried to do the same thing to her, not grab her nipples, but Coco's whole like I want to see her nipples. And Patterson's like, okay, just show her your nipples. And she's like, no, I don't want to show her my nipples because there's other employees here. I don't want to. Sh- I don't want to show them my bare breasts. And like, I, I, I don't. Know, I don't remember what happened to her. Maybe they fired her or something, and that would kickstart kickstarted the lawsuit. Probably but that's it was so, crazy. Like, yeah, that's yeah, like, like that's like um, the lady being like, all right, she wants to see the nips. Let's see them. I'm like, no, I'm nips. sorry, I don't want to show you my nipples. I'm sorry, Coco asked for the nipples. You have to show them right now. <laughs> oh, you gotta show them nipples. It's like, well, I... well, if you if you want, go into the room. Go into the room, take a picture of your nipples, and you know, I'll show it to Coco later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the like the is... do- the dolphin wants to get jerked off right now. I have to do it. There's no I... there's no choice. No, the, do- the dolphin told me he wanted you to jerk him off. <laughs> <laughs> I, just I have to be I... here while it's happening too. I have to. Say <laughs> Make sure you're doing it right too. <laughs> like if Coco couldn't do sign language, how do we know that it was Coco who wanted to see the nipples? Exactly. Like probably that is not. So true. <laughs> I mean, I believe like, I do believe Coco likes seeing nipples, but like for that... for Coco for Coco to say that she wants to see nipples and for anybody to have to like do that on the spot is ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's it sounds weird enough to be it sounds that sounds too specific to like kind of be fake. Um. Because if it was just if it was just Patterson with the nipple obsession, then I'm pretty sure she would have been way clever, more clever about it than just like oh, just flash. She would she would have been like okay, so today Coco is like she'll be happy. See, see, Coco's naked, and she'll be more happy if everyone in the room is naked and can and mm-hmm. can freely everyone can freely grab each other's nipples because that's mm-hmm. what that that'll make Coco feel more at home. You know, that's what we should do. Oh that's, my god, that seems like something she would. I mean, yeah, that, and I want. <laughs> it's very possible, like in my head, that a gorilla would be obsessed with nipples. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm just kind of like, but she can't do the sign language for it. <laughs> exactly. She, what I think what it was is that she would kind of just brute force signs, and like it would not make sense, and then like Patterson will always give some bullshit excuse, like. Right. Oh, um, she, she when she says nipples, she really means people because people rhymes with nipples. Even though those sign languages are, <laughs> those signs are so different from each other. How yeah. the fuck yeah, would they no. rhyme? How the fuck would Coco know they fucking rhyme? And another thing, like the last like footage of Coco is like her like delivering like a message about global warming for the for the right. Paris Accords, right. and it's like how the fuck does Coco know the concept of global warming? This does not make any sense. This is so staged, and it's like cut up too. Like it's cut up in different pieces. Cause yeah, obviously it's like, it's like, she's it's like saying splicing gibberish. somebody's like whole conversation to mean what you want. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Exactly. I think all maybe YouTube poop. I think it's like it's so weird the nipple thing because it's like there's no real reason to like if Coco wants to see somebody's nipples, there's no real reason to make them show her. <laughs> you know <laughs> you gotta show her you trust her you gotta like show like i'm out of fret coco here's my nipples maybe that's how gorillas do it in the wild they show each other's nipples i don't think i don't think gorillas would really have any attachment to nipples because gorillas like sex organs are not in their breasts like d- d- i know that like chimpanzees do kind of like have their own sex work where they offer like food right. to each other for sexual pleasure that's chimps um, yeah i mean chimpanzees i, I believe have it in their their like sex organs are like in their butt i mean they i think i mean they do breastfeed but it's like i mean there's like if if you consider like in tribes like in like africa or whatever Mm -hmm. where they're just like always like freeing the nipple like nobody nobody cares about boobs you know it's like not Mm -hmm. a big deal Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe since coco was raised around humans she's she you know she has like human like she has like a you know a Western sensibility idea of like a nipple, so 
know? Oh my gosh. Maybe because everybody around Coco is always wearing clothes, and she's like really into she's like, boobs well, what the or fuck? something. You know? Well, what the fuck? Show me some titties. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Coco. Coco just told me she wants to see her penis, and she wants to see it erect. So um, I'd do it if I were you. Like, you don't want to piss her off. She could rip you apart. Yeah. And if if you're having trouble getting it erect, I'll, I mean, I can help you out, right? Like, really quick. Right? <laughs> we really want this. Like, we really want Coco to feel at home right now. So. And, then, and then Coco like throws money at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like rain. There's mm-hmm. no way a gorilla can know sign language. Yep, no way. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry to burst everyone's fucking bubble. It's not true. Um, but enough, enough about about Coco. Um. I want to talk. I have a question for you guys. Um, can you please confirm right now for the audience? You you both are girls, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. So I want to get your guys' opinion on this very girl topic. Okay. okay? Oh, boy. What's, uh, what's your guys' opinion on... Uh, have you heard the phrase, good for her? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's your opinion on good for her cinema? What? Oh no! <laughs> you know, do you know what good for her cinema is? Oh, I think I know. Yeah. What you're, I think I know what you yeah. mean, and I think yeah. I'm for it. I think I'm pro, you, pro you're, that. You're, uh, you're pro good for her. I, I, uh, what I think you're talking about is like, I'm talking about like um, a movie girl. about like <laughs> some woman who like killed her husband or something, and then people are like good for her or something like that. Is that what you're talking uh, about? Yeah, like stuff like that. So stuff like maybe like. It's kind of like the it's kind of like the girl version of like you're not supposed to idolize them. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's kind of like on the other side of like the gender spectrum about it. So you'd have something like Gone Girl, which is like literally what you just described. Right. Um, well, almost. I don't. Have you seen Gone Girl? No. Oh, I think you'll love it or hate it. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone like. Oh god, that that movie like depending on the person, if you're an, it, that that movie could red pill to you like hard. <laughs> That's my review on Letterboxd for it. Is like this movie red pill me. I'm def. I'm I'm typically pro like f- women murdering people. You know, I'm typically you think it's typically good for that. You, you think um, I think it's good that be it a lot better. You think it's good that like women murder? Yeah, I think that's good. I'm, okay. I'm happy. You remember this? Did you see that recent? <laughs> did you see that? I, I don't want to actually bring real events into this, but did you see that uh, girl that people on Twitter were simping over the goth girl who like. Like Lord out some oh. wasn't even a boyfriend, just like some dude off Tinder, and he showed up and she just stabbed him and killed him. <laughs> and people are like simping over, you know that. There's always something like that. There's always every yeah. other like month. There's like a girl who's like, oh, she's like a war criminal, and everyone's like, like once, oh, she's once, a, like once a year, like once or twice a year, it happens. There was one mm-hmm. from like Japan a while ago. There was like a picture of like some crazy girl who would like stab the shit out of her boyfriend. He didn't kill him. Mm-hmm. But he was like, he was like laying on the ground, I guess, unconscious, and and she was just like sitting there in like a pool of his blood, and it was like crazy looking. Mm-hmm. He didn't die, I don't what? think. I I remember but, someone making fan art. Right. About yeah. Her, there was a lot of that fan guy got that. that guy got shit on. Um, yeah. I don't know how people. I I feel like some people might say, oh, like they'll give we... the they'll give the classic example of like. Oh, um, in Japan, it's a different sensibility. But even in Japan, they don't like that <laughs> shit. In Japan, they would not like that shit. If you're drawing fan art of, like, some psycho girl, you know? No, I don't think they would appreciate that. Yeah, ex- <laughs> ex- exactly. Yeah, because they, lo- they they hate that one. Uh, there was that, remember that one uh, Japanese cannibal guy? Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, no. That, oh, I Jesus. remember him, and he, I yeah, he like, had a comic made about him. He, I think he drew it he, he drew like a manga or something and yeah, people he in japan hate manga. him He's, he is not liked in japan he lives in but france he, he had to like escape to france or something i thought he had to go back to japan didn't he kill the girl in france and then he had to right go because some weird but, yeah I technicality think that's, that's right yeah, some some weird he shot her yeah exactly he just god i hate that i saw that video that video is disgusting that's horrible now if he was a woman he was a woman. Things would be a little bit different. Huh? It was different. <laughs> things would be a little bit different. Things would be a little bit different. Though. No, I'm joking. Oh, good. Good for. <laughs> it's not good to murder people. Don't do it, guys. Uh... Murdering it here at the main character's in your podcast. We do not like murder. Murder is bad. 
we I don't can condone that. murder. It's it's we funny because like murder. main characters are usually on either side. Like they either have to take a hard line stance, like murder is good or murder is bad, and there's not really any in between. I, I for, think like, it, a uh, character in media, you know. Uh, sometimes murder is okay. It depends I, on the situation. I don't want to talk about a bunch of fucking hypotheticals where murder could be like okay, but um, I think in the, I, I want to bring up. The, I don't know how on topic this is with like good for her cinema, but um, there's this one clip that I posted in uh my server. Wait, and, we didn't um, get Gloomy's opinion on it. Oh yeah, go ahead, Danny. Oh yeah, Danny, um, sorry. so like, you can call me Gloomy. That's fine. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, like the big thing that I think of when I think of good for her cinema is like people wildly misinterpreting Midsummer. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh, oh no, God, I yes. haven't seen Midsommar yet. No. Right, so <laughs> just uh, try to give your as spoiler less take about it, Danny. So, uh, with no spoilers, basically something bad happens to the boyfriend mm-hmm. in the movie. Uh, and, and, and if... Yeah, go on. And then, like, the ending shot, uh, it it looks like she's happy about that right good for but, her yeah good like that's her. that's like the good for her part but when you really think about it it's like she she just got she just really just got indoctrinated like it's like it's an incredibly successful indoctrination and the fact that people are very like good for her kind of says something about um yeah. lack of like lack of like critical analysis and also, um also like on. the fact that Ari Aster like is Jewish and says that the movie is like literally about white supremacist cults. Oh my god, yes. You know, I had I had a whole fan theory that that cult, like even though the cult kind of pretends to be this ancient like kind of pagan cult, I have a fan theory that they probably actually just started post World War Two and they're not that old as they claim to be. <laughs> yeah, because that's probably that the ju- case. Because that's usually like the thing with like fucking Nazis. They claim that the thing they follow is like old and ancient, but it's actually just recent. Like the recent, it's a recent invention. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah. Like this whole idea that they um that they are descendants of the Romans and the Vikings, and both of these groups hated each other. They, they're not. They would have not gotten along, right? It's so funny because they're so backwards and stupid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When do the when do the Nazis show up in Cat Girl? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Will there actually probably like 4chan Nazis? Oh my god! <laughs> 4chan Nazis on webtoons. Um, base. I um, when it comes to kind of like portrayal of Nazis or like fascists and like in villain verse, um, I try to like always make sure the fascists are like fictional because they're all just wacky aliens so they wouldn't make sense that you would see a swastika you know right right because like yeah exactly and you're gonna talk and about I, prison pit oh yeah prison pit is kind of like i consider it like the spiritual sibling to villain verse prison pit and is really, a comic about uh everybody's an alien and it's like this one alien criminal gets dropped into this prison is, 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 his, name is canna- his name is cannibal like fuck face or something yeah it's like yeah cannibal it's just, it's sort of thing. like super jail and like a space prison and mm-hmm. there's like dudes with like swastikas it's like why they're like all aliens. E- yeah e- <laughs> yeah even though they're all aliens they have swastikas and it there's like a bunch of like i because the thing is this artist is super edgy and and like you know i'm i, I could appreciate edgy art but then he did he did the worst thing imaginable he started nfts he started doing worse NFTs. than being a nazi to be honest yeah exactly i can let the nazi shit slide but the nfts no thanks no <laughs> definitely not right so yeah when it comes to like kind of fictional media there really is no need to actually portray real world fascists like um i think star wars does a good job of this where it's like there's a lot of like nazi inspiration but there's no direct like we don't know the ideology of the empire which is probably a good thing yeah the problem like, is like in the sequels they sort of really play up that they're nazis like Mm-hmm. They really kind of want to beat you over the head with it. Mm-hmm. The problem with p- d- portraying like fascism in media I, is like I feel like that was like in the original trilogy. But it was, but in the sequels they have like red banners and they, like actual dudes. They straight like, up do like, the they straight up do the salute in one part. Yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like 
whenever you portray fascism, especially like fantastical fasc- fascism in media, people will think it's cool and want to emulate it uh, because they like it. Because fascism is all about aesthetics and uh, like power. Keep on talking. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, fascism is all about like aesthetics of power, which is which is just inherently cool to people. Which is how fascism is kind of like a sort of unfortunately an easy thing to sell people on. So you get people like dressing up as stormtroopers, even though they're supposed to be like they're literally named after stormtrooper yeah. Nazis. It's like. For one, it's like people don't really know that that's what it's going for, and also people just think it's cool because it's fantasy, and they don't really know that it's what it's representing. That's just like a problem with the media in general, with all sorts of things. Uh, 100% agree, Spark. 100% agree. (laughs) I think maybe the best way to portray, like, fictional fascists, if you're, like, alluding to something that happens in real life, is to just, like... uh, especially if you have something that's set in the modern day, just make them, like, faceless, anonymous, like, trolls online who don't really get much screen time at all. You gotta make them lame. That's, yeah. Because no one's gonna remember them, no one's gonna care about them, and then they're just gonna be like, remember when that asshole said that one thing? Fucking sucked. Yeah, um, The Boys, I think, does a really good job of this to show, because... And the boys, it, it portrays it's 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 very heavy handed in a good way about like this is like these guys are fascist. I'm talking about season two of the boys, so if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil anything. But it's like we see that the people who are falling for this fascist rhetoric are just like stupid, like down and out dudes on the internet mm-hmm. who just want to belong to something, and yeah. that's just who like fascism is preying on. It's not like you're not like a cool Chad if you're like. You know, it's the, the people who are right. following the fascism don't have any actual power. They're just trying to, like, belong to something that they think makes there, them stronger. There's this um one scene, this is one panel from the Preacher comics that I really like, where, like, he's, like, talking shit to a bunch of, like, KKK members. And he's all like, why does, like, the best example of, like, the white race always, like, the worst fucking example of it? And then, then he fucking just instantly says to a KKK member, like literally the next line is all like why do you have a double chin <laughs> <laughs> or, or no he says like why don't you have a chin because this guy's just chinless he has like the beta chin on him yeah fascism only really fascism only appeals to people who who want to see some sort of power they perceive that they've lost or has been taken mm-hmm. from them mm-hmm. and those kind of people are usually uh not chad like at all very yeah, unbased exactly. Um, the, like, but... stereotypical guy who falls for that kind of stuff is, like, the saddest person who hates their dad. <laughs> um, base? <laughs> uh, all right, hates but I just their dad clarify. but loves their grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify. But if the fascist is a girl... Then it's a completely Storm different Front? story. I don't know. Stormfront kind of no, no, not kind at of all. Dead. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, um, so yeah, a couple of a couple of seconds ago, I I left the call real quick because um I heard a, some weird sound in the background. It kind of sounded like something was pumping, like something was going uh uh uh, right? And and I and I think like, what the fuck is my cat doing? And I look. And I'm like, oh no, he's doing like the little he's doing the hairball. Sh- yeah, he's doing the little shakes that he's about to like drop something out of his mouth. And like he's right on top of my partner's laptop. <laughs> and I'm like, oh fuck. So I, I ran and I grabbed him. And luckily I, I got him before he could do it. Oh god. He's been um he's been coughing up a lot of stuff today. Um I hope he's okay. I hope yeah. so too. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah he's a he's a little feller. But um um back to the good for her comment um i guess this is like kind of related but I, I showed this one clip to um to spork of from um it was like i think a little documentary from someone named uh Octi- octavia e butler who's like a black science fiction writer mm-hmm. and she right. was talk- yeah yeah and she was talking about um what inspired her to start writing like at a young age and she said that she watched this one movie I think it's called like Hell Women from Mars or something or She yeah. Devils from Mars. Yeah, yeah. So she watched this one movie 
and um he said that in this movie these like like sexy alien women show up and they want to they ran out of men so they so they want so they're trying to convince these men to come back to mars to mate with them and the men says no even though they're so sexy and she thought that was so <laughs> she thought that was such a big like kind of plot hole like it doesn't make sense why did they not go to the sexy women of mars that she she started writing out of spite because of this story <laughs> like she could like i could write a way better story than this right yeah mm-hmm. she's just saying that like a lot of writers start writing because they feel they can write better than whatever thing is they're looking yeah. at yeah and that's uh that was gonna be like my next kind of like topic about um creating something out of spite have you guys ever created anything out of spite that girl is out of spite <laughs> Hmm. base base who is it out of spite of hmm. um like mostly like people that i've known in my real life that mm-hmm. have like turned out to be like terrible shit people mm. or like also watching a lot of anime as a kid and being like this doesn't make any sense like why isn't this a horror story <laughs> <laughs> i i i hate like in harem harem would would do this thing where it's like i've created this woman she has a really great backstory she has a like, great motivation she has a great personality and now i'm gonna like make her date the blandest motherfucker on the planet right and it's yeah. like it this feels like a punishment like why did like, you do this to her? Muyo, like, like the strongest bitches in the universe or after this like fucking weakling yeah exactly and like i mean i get it if the, per- if the guy's like a nice guy and everything <laughs> i guess right but, but he's it's usually so, not it, even nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of like that was kind of my approach when I did Bongo and Luna. I was thinking like, if in an alternate universe, the evil version of Bongo and Luna would be that they all would have been like members in a harem. Yeah, and, um, that's that's just garbage. I hate that. Like, I think I think people should just make a harem and then just remove the bland guy. Just focus on the girls because I hundred percent bet you could have just way more interesting stories with just the girls. We don't need a, a guy to be the self-insert. Actually, we well, can just you do, self-insert though. ourselves. At, eh, no, I disagree. I mean, if you want to self, I think you can self-insert self insert yourself as a girl. Here's the thing. You no. can make the guy in there, but, like, just don't use him at all. Just, like, <laughs> like have him there to just show up and be like, hey, guys, you need to pay rent or something or, like, <laughs> whatever. And then just, like have him fuck off for the rest of the chapter he, he he should be like um like uh there's a character in um you guys ever seen the show righteous gemstones no nope. i think it okay. sounds familiar there's a character it's about like an evangelical family and it's kind of like a comedy drama mm-hmm. and um one of the one of the like daughters is dating this guy called bj who's like this kind of white almost like kind of soy beta guy who um who, who's actually very like the whole family just filled with assholes and he's like a very caring person and he cares about other people and he's also very progressive compared to them because they're all like christian conservative conservatives but like yeah. he tolerates it because like he respects other people's like religion but mm-hmm. um he, he he's really like he everyone just just shits on him for being like a little fucking soy boy so i'm thinking like yeah, if we do a harem just make the guy like a soy boy <laughs> but because <laughs> he um he would say shit like like, I think his girlfriend was complimenting him, like, oh, you're, you're such a big, tough man right now. And he's all like, I prefer if you use a, a non-gender term to, like, <laughs> compliment me. <laughs> I want a harem pro tag who says shit like that. That would be that would be pretty great, in my opinion. That would make the world a better place. I mean, but that's just my of... opinion. It's you true, You could also lot... have... Oh, sorry, go ahead. As, like, a lot of anime does portray things that are really horrendous and heinous as like the best thing in the world and it's kind of like one of the main i mean everybody talks about this with anime but it's like yeah the the skewed like warped sense of like what is right and wrong and like anime and manga is like really fucked up Mm -hmm. and uh there there does need to be more stuff that like challenges or like addresses that Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah exactly and um oh i just want to I, th- I think i said this before in other videos i did make bongo luna out of spite um that was to spite one specific person though it was uh there was um back in the day i used to like make a lot of short films with a group of friends and we were trying to be like the next uh, million dollar extreme um if cheesy's knows, alt-right arc we're talking yeah this was back <laughs> when i was like all this was back when i was alt-right 
white supremacists and <laughs> but um yeah we were we were all really into like million dollar extreme and while we were like making one of our little skits um uh one of my friends like a uh, girlfriend was there i didn't really like talk to her uh, she seemed kind of cool but then later i found out that my friend told her that um i draw like big titty clowns and this was like right before bongo luna where i was just, just kind of just drawing bongo because i just felt like it not because it was a comic and then she mm-hmm. told she told him to tell me to stop doing that, and that made me very upset. Why? Because <laughs> it's like, how dare this woman tell me to stop drawing big titty clowns? Just because of that, I am going to make a weekly comic series about big titty clowns, and and that's and the rest is history. The re- <laughs> I just I don't did- understand. You're not hurting anyone. <laughs> Are you even right, exactly. hurting clowns? It, exactly like um it's just so like I, I mean i don't know i guess maybe she was just joking maybe she was like ha, tell him to stop lol haha right yeah but at the time like i felt like oof i felt there was there was evil in my heart there still is evil in my heart though not gonna lie that hasn't changed <laughs> oh um, we know <laughs> we are aware uh, but, it's but yeah that's it's valid yeah, to have evil in your heart true spark you ever um made anything out of spite I can't think of any time that I really did. Uh, I have to think really hard. Mm-hmm. I feel like the things I make are usually just out of like wanting to see a type of thing that doesn't really exist. Mm. Oh, fuck. Or something. Oh, yeah, you can do that, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can do yeah, that, too. <laughs> yeah, I can do that, too. Actually, I think uh, I think Villainverse was that for me. <laughs> I really? think... Um, yeah, yeah, because I just thought, oh, I want this to exist. Also, because what I what I mean is like a type of like story that I don't think I've really seen, or like I think a type of story that I think I could portray in an interesting way. Mm-hmm. Not it's really good like to stuff that yeah. you love too, but mm-hmm. I think I grow to like love the stuff that I initially start out because of spite. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I have an example. Um. So. Back when like Toonami came back, and they had Naruto on there, which is which I hate. I hate Naruto. You, I was talking. Do you still hate Naruto now? I do. Okay. I was on. I was talking about um, I was talking to people, and they're like, "Yeah, Naruto isn't about ninjas. It's really just like about wizards." And I was like, "Huh? A shonen about wizards?" And for the longest time, I had this like idea for a comic I would make, and I developed this idea a whole lot for years about like this like wizard just like the world where there was like wizards it kind of like evolved into something that was nothing like naruto luckily Mm -hmm. but that was sort of like the impetus for my idea of it like oh like wizards huh but i don't i wouldn't say that's spite a a lot of a lot of things i think about or make are sort of like seeing a thing and being like oh you could take this idea and like build upon it or something Mm-hmm. yeah i yeah I, I think i like doing that too like when when you watch something that like is has like cool ideas but isn't necessarily good you know right yeah like like yeah. uh oh my like god no no <laughs> i was gonna say like uh <laughs> like steven universe yeah like steven universe <laughs> Oh, has a God. lot of the coolest ideas I've ever seen executed really awfully. I do love Steven Universe. I just uh, I, I hope really dislike I hope every- how some things go in that. I was one of those annoying people back on Tumblr who had like a side blog to criticize Steven Universe. Exactly. But <laughs> at the same time, I did it from like a different sort of perspective where I was like doing critical analysis that I was doing like in school to try mm-hmm. and analyze the text. Uh, And I came to the conclusion that uh, Steven Universe isn't about aliens, it's not about uh, war, it's about grief, and that's it. Right. Future kind of, like, nails that in, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And that's why a lot of people didn't like it, because nobody likes experiencing grief. (laughs) It's... It's it's kind Rebecca of like sugar based. Yeah. She knew what she was talking about. Also, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rebecca Sugar is very based. I like her a lot, but um, it's sort of like there's a lot of very muddled things 
that happen in Steven Universe where meanings are sort of hinted at or like refuted later on or like con- contradicted just because there's like so many writers working on it. I could talk about Steven Universe for a long time and I won't, but <laughs> yeah, yeah has, there's there's definitely Steven a thing I want to make that that is inspired by Steven Universe. Mm-hmm. I think at some point I might make something inspired by Steven Universe because I think it really got me into like analyzing art from a different perspective than I used to, which was just kind of like, oh, I like this. Oh, I didn't like this. It was the first time I felt like a complicated emotion about a piece of media. Mm-hmm, Interesting. Mm-hmm. I um yeah, I hope Rebecca Sugar hits me up for the Steven Universe reboot. She's like, cheesy, I need you. I need your unique eye to, to, to remake Steven Universe. It would have yeah. a lot more interesting shot composition. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, that's one thing about... Okay, I'm not going to talk about Steven Universe. <laughs> <laughs> when you say Steven Universe is good for you cinema, it's good for her cinema. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, when you say you're not supposed, When you say you're not supposed to idolize Steven... <laughs> I think you are supposed to idolize Steven, but I think, um, yeah, he's like Jesus. whatever. He's like a <laughs> Jesus figure because he's like, because he, he's like, like half God almost, right? Yeah, he's, he's, li- he's literally Jesus. half space God, mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. goddess, even. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He's like All a right. Jesus born from Judas. No, wait, what do you mean? Because like wait, diamonds wait. of sort of like complicated figure. Oh, that's what you mean. Oh, uh, okay. I was wondering, like, where were you going with that? I would uh, say, hmm, if we want to, if we want to go real deep into the biblical subtext of Steven Universe, <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, nah, not gonna do it. But um, I think we could get to our like final segment of the show, and that is, um, who do you think deserves to get canceled this week? Oh my God. <laughs> yes ex- yeah exactly you gotta pick one person you want to cancel and um if you get i'm gonna i'll go first so you guys get so you guys can think of who you want to get canceled and i think the people who need to get canceled are the people who like make the um who don't have an art style they have more of an art filter you get me please Ooh. explain okay so there's this there's this guy um i think his name is he was, he was a guy at, like, the convention that I was, like, boofing, like, a couple, like, weeks ago. Um, nothing against this guy, because he, he most likely makes way more money than me. Which right? means he's superior. Mm-hmm. Which is, means he's a better person. <laughs> it, means, it, means, it means he's a better human than me, right? Right. And um, his his kind of thing that he does is that he sells these prints that he, um, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure he's, like, oh, I made these prints. Like, he, he inks them, right? And I'm gonna show you what I mean. Like I'm gonna post it right here. Put this guy on and what blast. I'm saying, put this on screen too. Yeah, I'll put it on screen. So this guy right here, look at that. So this okay. is what I mean. That this isn't an art style. It's more like an art filter. This is uh literally the same thing, but you just put it in the black and white filter. He, I think he. I'm pretty sure he. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. He's probably the nicest person in the world, and I'm like the most evilest person in the world. But um, like he he literally like I'm pretty sure what he does, and this is like the only way I could picture him These doing are it like this. Yeah, yeah, like he had to like have printed them out on big paper, and then just put his own paper over it, and then just ink it exactly right. Can, Which is uh, a talent. It's a really good use, talent. But you can use a projector to project the image and then draw onto it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I think? That's what I did, did in college sometimes. I think he, I think he did it in a a vector style. I think he like went over it with vectors and then he like mm-hmm. printed it as a print this does mm-hmm. not look physical yeah it doesn't no there's like no mm-hmm. hand in this it's so yeah yeah and it's like um and and i was like boofing right next to him and i was thinking like wow this is like very kind of like normie core like this is something that like oh i like naruto i'm gonna put this in my living room yeah so, so you see my epic big money yeah, my epic Japanese brush show Naruto picture, right? And I know I'm saying all this shit about him, but but as I was looking at his booth, I saw that he had a picture 
of Devil Man, and I thought to myself, that is so fucking cool. I want that. <laughs> right. So, and, but that's how he gets you, right? Like, he throws this wide net. Like, he, he does, like, everyone, right? And that's, it, it works, you know? It's smart, you know? Like, but it isn't fan art because I'm pretty sure he's probably not a fan of any of these things. He probably just is like, this is really popular right now at conventions mm-hmm. and this will get people to buy my stuff. Dude, There's definitely a think... lot of people who do stuff like this. If you go to any con, mm-hmm. you'll see a lot of this. Oh. Yeah, it's, it is it is like very popular to have these at cons. Like, hmm, I'm thinking like, do you think so? I don't think someone needs to be a fan of said thing for people to want it you know because think of it as like yeah like think of it when someone commissions your character that you like know nothing about and you just draw it and they're like oh this is so great thank you like stuff like that you know yeah yeah Mm -hmm. you're basically not an artist you're like a you're like a craftsman i don't even want to say that Mm -hmm. you're you're just like making product to sell so so basically um canceling this gentleman because he makes more (laughs) money he makes more money than me um he's better than me in every way he's happier uh, not having to think about producing art he can just look at a on google for naruto and just draw it he, he's just gotta wait till the next fucking manga hit drops and he's like oh well time to draw 20 of these of these gamers and make rent that's right yeah uh, hopefully i hope he lives a long beautiful life um and never knows that i exist <laughs> if i see him and I, he sees me at the next con and he beats the shit out of me like i hear you were talking shit man are you well, are you cheesy man Fredo, the main characters in your podcast? And I'm like, I have no idea who the fuck you're talking about, bro. Well, you didn't say his name, so it's fine. I did say his name. We're oh, gonna put did? it. We're gonna put these pictures up on the on the screen. <laughs> oh, we'll right, just crop exactly. his name out. <laughs> crop his name Uncredited. out and blur his face. Um, I think I've said his name on another podcast. Let's, so I think uh, blurring his face would be funny. We should do that. <laughs> Blur his face and blur the faces of all the anime characters. <laughs> <laughs> like now they can never find him. <laughs> but yeah, he's he he's the man I will be canceling this week. All right, who do you guys want to cancel? Pick one. Please. Do you have anyone in mind, Spork? I uh, I don't anyone that just annoyed you this week. I don't feel ire for people. I kind of you know try to t- try to be positive in my life. You know. Okay. You um, know, I, I try to like you know, not okay, be super me, negative about everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna see if this could lead to a potential answer. But what's your take on the flip versus no flip art <sighs> debate that's happening on Twitter? It's good. To <laughs> we flip, should get. It's good. To we should get your canceled. Art. It's good to, to flip the, your art. That's it. Do you do you want to cancel the anti flippers? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I'm I'm not pro flip on this. I I do not want to cancel the anti. You're, you're neutral. You're neutral flip. <laughs> I just think the anti's are just wrong, <laughs> and they should just they should just. I mean, you don't have to. I don't flip a lot of my art, but whenever I do, I it usually is for the better. So I um I think everyone who's like anti flip are I notice there's a lot of like a handful of like industry like comic artists who are on the anti flip side, but that's because the they were majority. Physically. Yeah, they work physically, so they they wouldn't. How would they fucking flip? Like, sure, you could say you could use a mirror, but like, if you see something yeah. wrong, you're, you have to you're gonna have to restart over or like white out stuff, which is so annoying. It's definitely if only have... a, a digital process. Like, mm-hmm. if you're physical, you shouldn't even be in the conversation. It's not apply to you, really. Yeah, Danny, I think you had a pretty good uh, take about the flip. Oh Art yeah, thing. so Let me like repeat it here. Yeah, so, um. You should flip your art if you're doing charms that have a double side to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a side A and a side B where it's the same picture or maybe a, a like the same like picture but with like a few edits or something like that. Just to make sure that everything looks right on both sides when the actual product is produced. But other than that, uh, you don't need to flip because you're not going to be seeing it flipped. So it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. See, okay. The reason you flip art is not because is not because you're going to be seeing it flipped. It's because whenever you're drawing something, you don't you're you lose the ability to see it sort of objectively from like uh an audience perspective. So, if you if you draw something and you have like a glaring mistake, say the the Pokémon everybody's been talking about where it's like clearly one of the eyes is like wonky. If you're when you're drawing it, you're not going to notice that because you're too inside of it at the moment, and unless you're mm-hmm. going to like look at it like 
like days later or something and take a break from it and come back. That that's my strategy is to just look at you, it days you later. You can you can do that. That works also, but flipping it does help to like a lot of drawings that I've made, I like I draw it and it's like I flip it and then I discover that the character is like leaning like really far in one direction. Like they're just like leaning really strangely in a way that looks weird and I would never be able to tell that looking at the normal version. But it's apparent that it's happening and you can like sort of correct it after that if you just flip it and like see, oh, okay, I want them to stand up straight and not be leaning in any direction. It's just it's just good to just get fresh a fresh look at a thing that you're drawing. I I agree. There's other ways to get a fresh look at things, though. I think I there, agree. There with are. That. I I feel like any way that just helps you is fine. If, if it's flipping or waiting a couple days, it ultimately I I have full faith in all in artists to just choose the right way for them because they know themselves better than I will ever. Right. That being no, said, I don't agree with that. Artists don't know anything. <laughs> That no, I okay. You know what? I I half agree with that. You know what? I'm a, I'm, I'm on both sides. I'm a centrist. Um, I mean, it's like yeah, like you can use whatever method you like. I think people just do flip because we're all about immediacy, and we'll just we'll just post whatever we just made that day or whatever. So you want to just see it quickly, like oh, I mean, if I'm drawing a face, I always want to flip it because I I definitely tend to like draw faces like really wonky. And if I'll come to it, like, if I look at it years, like, in a year, I'll be like, oh, that looks bad. But if I look at it now, I'm just like, oh, it looks good. It's like, mm. you want to see it, like, you just want to see it from as many angles as you can. Mm. Another uh, way I to so fix that is, like, drawing traditionally and then, um, like, putting it into your digital program of choice, which oh, should that. be Clip Studio Paint. And then... <laughs> And then, like, sketching over the mistakes that you make. I've considered it. I mean, I've tried to do that. I've done that many times. It's it's definitely easier for me to go digital now because I have an iPad. Before I had an iPad and I had a regular tablet, it was drawing is very difficult, I think, on a tablet yeah. where you, like, have to look at a thing that's the forest from your hand. But if I that since I have my hard. iPad, it's, it's more one-to-one, -one and it's, like, I definitely produce better-looking art because of it. Yeah. That's pretty good. I just also want to clarify that on Twitter, I am fully anti-flip because I think it's funny. <laughs> and um, I liked, I love taking sides during like um, Twitter, like these Twitter feuds that happen with people because it's funny. I think, I think yeah. when people get angry on Twitter, that is very hilarious to me. Twitter is always, art Twitter in particular is always on like some new giant like debacle about how you should make art or like, here's a tip for an art. Uh, you don't have to do it. And then people are like, how dare you give me a tip to make art? Like, how dare you? Like, I don't do it that way. You're saying my art's bad because I don't do it that way. It's like, no, nobody's saying that. Just just calm down. Did it's you not ever, that serious. Did you ever see that one guy? He was He's like a storyboard artist. And he um, he was giving like storyboard tips. Like, oh, this is how you do perspective um, in like storyboard. And he was doing like a whole series of them. And he did the first one and people got really mad at him because I'll like, um, you can't always just use this rule for all all the time but the thing is that they didn't realize this was a series so in the next part you're gonna explain like the finer points about this but people were really like shitting on them i remember people, that people yeah. really really do not like being told the proper way to do things or like they don't like being i guess i guess people just don't like being looked down upon maybe that's what they think it's doing i don't know i don't understand it it's wasn't really there weird. like uh there was, wasn't there someone called like manga art tips or something who like, right. got kind of bullied off there was a, think... yes, he, it was a artist who made a lot of like anatomy and like anatomy, like t tutorials basically and posted them on Twitter in Japanese. And there was an English account also. People got mad at the, uh, at the English one and they deleted it. I don't even remember think, why they got mad. I, I, I think, think they got like mad nothing. because they, I think they unironically said something about different skull sizes when drawing like different ethnicities. Are you sure? It was something. No, like that, you're thinking. I, I think you're thinking of. Um, you might be thinking of the Stonehouse Anatomy art book. You remember no. that one? Because oh, that I one had like. That. Yeah. That I one had that some that. weird stuff in it. That one was definitely mm. weird. But, okay, um, I think I yeah I might be thinking of someone else then. The um the. Yeah, the Mongo like art tips one is still on, Twitter. They just don't have their English account, which is unfortunate because they're they were a really good tutorial uh creator. Yeah, 
probably for the better ultimately i think it's always really funny when people are just like yeah don't tell me how to do art because (laughs) as a kid like having two artist parents like i was always told how to do art really okay talk about that that's interesting um yes go go off go off queen (laughs) So, like, my dad is a webcomic artist and graphic designer, and then my mom does fiber arts, and she used to be a painter. And uh, they met in art school uh, at a place called MCAD, which doesn't exist anymore. (laughs) And uh, so when I was a kid, I would draw a bunch of, like, shitty anime drawings in my sketchbook, and um, my dad would always, like, go over my stuff with like a red pen and like outline oh my, my god. mistakes oh, no. oh, oh no. my god that's crazy oh, Jesus Christ. but that and was like, good for you it was it was good for me and bad for me because like i would never finish a sketchbook because i was too afraid to show anyone my sketchbook no. with all my mistakes in it but it was also uh good because eventually i like internalized um, how to break things down into shapes and my dad had a bunch of like resources for me to look at like tutorials and like um, materials that I could experiment and play with and stuff and like I had a tablet really early on that I could use on my computer um, and all that stuff so I got into digital art really early too so like good and bad that's interesting I always like think about I think about it pretty often the proper way to teach to teach new artists without discouraging them because what I saw growing up is the artists that get uh, applauded for their work and people say you, you draw well usually tend to keep drawing and then get good but the people who probably don't have a lot of that positive reinforcement tend to like quit yeah. and and it's like it seems like if you're a person who actually knows about art and could teach somebody the processes, like finding that balance between being positive and also like trying to guide them into the right way to go is, is interesting to me. Sometimes I do try to teach people like how to draw or like somebody asked me like, how do you do a thing? And I'll try my best. And I like doing it. Mm. It's just uh damn like redlining a child's drawing i don't think whatever <laughs> that does not You're seem like, like the way <laughs> look dad i drew blues clues and it's all like uh that's not what a dog looks like you yeah, didn't even you didn't lie. even you didn't even like remember the three fourths rule i taught you last week what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> so um so let me let me get this straight sport you're canceling our twitter and uh Danny, right. you're canceling you're canceling your dad <laughs> i think that's the way no, it's i want to cancel yeah. someone else who do you want to cancel, Danny? Uh, I want to cancel, um, like specifically industry artists on Twitter. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, like, let's go. Go off. Industry artists on Twitter who like are, uh, like telling people like back when the Gumroad thing happened, we're telling people to like vote. Huh. So. There, there was this one artist that I used to follow, and I remember their name, but I'm not going to say it here because I am afraid. But I'll say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, when the Gumroad thing was happening, they were like, well, the thing with Gumroad is happening is really bad, but, like, it's not going to fix NFTs, so you need to vote. And I was like, this is the most liberal shit I've ever seen. And then I looked, and, like, they have, like, 16k followers and have an agent and are represented by like a publishing company and all this shit and i looked and there were more artists that they had retweeted who had said this like similar sentiment and i was like oh of course they don't care they have an agent mm-hmm. so, I'm so they said artists with agents i guess they said you nice. should vote in government to fix nfts yeah like- is there even a politician <laughs> who's doing like NF- anything NFT related? No. I mean, no. there's like there's like the recent thing that happened, but like no, not really. And then they like yeah. thought that they did something, so they like linked a place to find out if you're registered to vote, which is like that's so silly. Go off. It's so dumb. It's like, what is that gonna fix anything? Like, even when you do vote, nothing happens because of it. Like. Yeah, it I'm a, a I'm a single issue voter. My issue is NFTs. Like, what? <laughs> like what? 
<laughs> oh my god. It's so it reminds me of um yesterday I finally saw the OK KO episode about gun control. Oh, uh, we have, I don't think we've gotten there yet in our watching oh, OK KO. It's cuz yesterday we were talking about um a, fr- a friend of ours was arguing that like that like feminist episode of Powerpuff Girls was actually progressive and Lauren Faust should have not apologized for it. And we watched it and I'm like, no, I can see why she apologized for this episode. <laughs> um oh, yeah. and then we we watched the okay ko and like i i guess do you mind if i spoil it for you sport because i know you're yeah just sure to work. that's fine okay so how the episode ends is that they, they, their metaphor for guns is like a remote that turns people into skeletons and you lose all your <laughs> you lose all your superpowers like you're just you're still a living skeleton and you just lose all your superpowers that's like it right and, <laughs> and that the remote is like represents guns and and okay ko doesn't ko doesn't like it so um he like tries to like do something about it but nothing works and it looks like he's about to be shot with the skeleton gun but he wakes up it was a dream right and he told us he told his mom like oh i felt so real like i'm so scared mom i'm so scared that skeleton remotes might be real <laughs> and um his mom's like well you know what you could do ko she looks at the camera and says call your congressman <laughs> and and okay ko calls his congressman <laughs> And she and she has like a superhero cape, and she's about to sign some sort of deal. But then o- uh, um, Ko calls her, and he's all like, "What? Oh my god, is that true?" And then and then she then she doesn't sign the deal, and the deal was for like to sell like skeleton remotes. But luckily, Ko is like he can see the future, so he stopped this right. And then she like <laughs> kicks it. She kicks this guy's ass for doing for selling for selling skeleton remotes. And I'm like, wow, I wish they worked that way. I, I don't think I like that. <laughs> Because it, it's so, it's like, because the real ending, the real life ending would have been like, I'll pay you more to sign this. And she'll be like, oh, hell yeah. And then that's what, would, what would really happen. Not just because KO calls one congressman. They have. The rule changes. The Captain Planet episode I thought was pretty good because in that episode they say, yeah, the rest of the Planeteers quit. It's just been me and Captain Planet trying to fix this shit, but it's not working. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. we can't fix this. Like, everybody needs to fix this. Like... The, the Captain was... Planet episode was like the the moral of the story was like, yeah, you sh- you should do all these good things for the environment, but like individual people can't actually do anything about it. You have to have you have mm-hmm. to go to the people who actually matter, to the um, corporations and shit. What was there a line in the K in that same episode where one of the villains like says something about like we could we could pollute the the planet as much as we can, like it's it's being destroyed. And the the great thing is that like half the planet doesn't even believe this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was pretty that was pretty good. Um and I think if, if there's any other topic you guys want to bring up cuz I think we're at we're at the end. We're this is this is the end of the podcast. Okay, KO is a really good yeah. show. Okay, KO is a really good show. Industry Twitter artists. Industry yeah, artists right. on Twitter. Oh my gosh, do you remember that? <laughs> do you remember the um I think it was what? like it might have been before the big Twitter artist thing. There was one nice. particular big artist. There was like the the discourse was like, um, it was basically the same thing as the big Twitter artist. Like this, people were saying, yeah, like a small people, we we can't get seen. It's really difficult. And this one big industry artist was like, uh, honestly, a lot of you people saying that it's hard for your art to get seen should should look at your art quality and and try to be better and all that and she got fucking destroyed like she got like annihilated by people and she like privated her account for a while i don't remember she's her like name. my she's like my polar opposite we should team up she I'm was gonna, like gonna, she was like who she, is. she was yes. talking about like how she had to go to therapy for like getting like absolutely annihilated by the internet so hard Oh which, my god. But she did get yeah, like a yeah. fuck everybody was talking about her. Like everybody was like saying fuck you. I didn't see a single person like being I'm in gonna... support of her because she was wrong, but it's like Damn. I think um I think maybe the second episode of the of the main character syndrome should be called like it's a thumbnail and it's like me sad and in the background it's a big Twitter artist comic and the cap the, the text on the front is like I needed therapy. <laughs> <laughs> And the title is gonna be like "I regret big Twitter artist comic." And <laughs> I didn't mean to say that about Rhea the Last Dragon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I I'm sorry. I, I mean, I was mean... still right. I just did. I just shouldn't have said it on Twitter. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, my dream is to bring Lindsay Ellis on 
Um, Good I will, luck. I will, I will, I will, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Because you know, I want to be on pro, that episode. This is a pro Lindsay Ellis podcast. Are we on? We're on her side. Yeah. It's, it's oh, her yeah. turn. It's her turn to return. Uh, if you get Lindsay Ellis on, please let me be on that episode. Okay. Uh, please I'll ask about her about it. therapy for getting ratioed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, I, want, I mean, I want to get it. It's oh my God. it's it's very funny to joke about, but it's like, damn, like thousands of people fucking hate you and think you're racist. Just, I, just don't, because... I don't think I would really be able to handle that too well either. Just, just because you said that, it. like, right, Ray of the Last Dragon had like the same plot as avatar it was and... it was inspired by avatar which is obviously correct that's all she said mm-hmm. damn they hate to see a girl boss winning they, they hate to see a they girl do. boss winning they do yeah, ironically. True. that's why we need a good for her Lindsay ellis episode i'm like i'm like the Lindsay ellis of our twitter <laughs> <laughs> yeah go on uh i am um, i stopped doing video essays in in solidarity with Lindsay ellis that's and true when she comes back i'll I'll start doing them again that's true um, you have not made a you have not made a video essay since Lindsay ellis was uh... actually that's a lie i dropped my goblin video oh that's essay. true never mind <laughs> <laughs> and i have like a couple more planned for the future when i get some more free time but anyway guys this is the part of the podcast where you guys get to show your stuff um spork where could the people find you and what should they check out of your stuff spork town hero on twitter it's gonna be in the description it's on the it's on the screen you can look spork it's probably hero. on the screen yeah mm-hmm. and uh danny or aka gloomy punk where could people find you and where uh, can they find cat girl so you can find cat girl on webtoons or you can follow my twitter or instagram which is also gloomy punks mm-hmm. with an s you should post you should post cat girl comics just on Twitter. I'm pretty sure people will retweet it and share it around. Yeah, yeah probably. That's true. I should probably do more than promos. You should you like yeah, you that, should actually uh, like that one artist who just posts their whole comic on Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah I love Manfredo. Them. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that guy. We don't don't not be like that fuck guy. that guy. Don't 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 learn don't you fall do for his mistakes. I don't want to be like him. No, no, no. I warned you about Twitter, bro. I warned you. All right, guys. So you know about me, Cheesy Manfredo. Check out. We got way more podcasts. This is like my podcast factory channel. So yep. it's, check the out um, Cake Factory. Yeah, exactly. Check out go. the check out the last podcast I did with Stereos Coconuts. It's probably the funniest podcast I've been on. Um, I guarantee it. And I think with that, uh, yeah, this is the end. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye.